The following video will run you through installing Base Station for the first time and it will run you through installing Active Display Light from Gatwick Aviation Society just to get the screen populated with a few registrations and operator logos. The video is filmed on a working airfield so there will be some noises in the background which shouldn't detract from the main video. If I do it in the evening when it's all quiet there's not a lot on the screen for you to see so I decided to do it at work. Sit back and enjoy while you see the installation of Base Station. Okay here's a quick short introduction video of how to install Base Station. If you pop onto the Kinetic website and go to Kinetic then take a look at support, downloads, sorry let's try that again, downloads. The one we want, Base Station 168 is the latest one. If you look here, whatever's the latest is the one to download. Click download, save as, and first that, that's it. Call it as, as the CD and away you go. And it downloads. Once it's downloaded, simply go bottom left hand corner of your screen, click on start. The name of your computer, my one's called Kinetic Support, the downloads folder base station CD double click on it and here it is and if you try to run it now it won't run because it's zipped up here extract all files click on that leave it where it is click on that box show extractive files click extract and it will extract it all for you once that's done open up the base station or the base station folder pop open double click on setup yes you want it to run because you want it to install base station and it configures and runs away next and there's the few welcome bits and readers notes and let it run its stuff and do the installation which will take a few moments and um, away we go the shortcuts come along click finish it's now popped up a little box and installed the drivers there are two drivers it installs and that's why two boxes popped up so that's done okay we now have base station, base station reporter and the reference manual. The reference manual, my advice is open it up with either Adobe or OpenOffice, print it out and have a good read. Base station reporter, that's for looking at your historical data. No point running it until you've set it up because there'll be nothing to see. In fact, if I do that, it'll come up and say the base station database doesn't exist. So, OK, and it has an error. So, let's run up base station and see what it does. Base station comes along, welcome screen next. It's asking me where I am. We can pop in latitude and longitude if we know it. If we don't, just find your nearest city in the world, wherever you may be. I happen to be in the United Kingdom in London, so that's what I'm gonna select. Hit next. Connected by USB. You need to be connected by USB for the initial install. Um, once you've done the initial install, if you want to connect by Ethernet, you can do, and I'll cover how we do that after this on another video. So click next, and it's testing your setup to receive data. We've received some data from an aircraft. You have to have the antenna connected, the 1090, and connect your SDR because I'm going to show you how to get audio. So there we have it. Base station now up and running. Simple screen. If we look up here, that one there removes the waypoints. Um, not too much information about the aircraft at the moment, very little in fact. So if we um, come up here and look at settings, display settings, you've started with a blank canvas, so let's start adding some colour to the canvas and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, I like to have blue flying up to the clouds, I like to have white flying through green coming down to the grass red on the ground no reason i just like to have red on the ground so there we have it now over here on the right again i like to uh, customize the colors i don't like the defaults some do some don't personally i like to have black um, lines i like to have black text and i like to have a white background um, just because it looks like a sheet of paper it's as simple as that uh, we're all different that's what I like so there we are if we look at these columns if I go here there's lots of them um, I'm not interested in show trailer get that out of the way operator flag that's empty what other columns are there well let's have a look registration 
we'll open that up and have a look at the registrations. Oh, we won't, there aren't any. So let's put some registrations in. Okay, so there was the dreaded PPI phone call in the middle of that that we all seem to be inundated, inundated with. So there we go, base station, shut it down, save it, and away you go. Base station reporter now has some data. Not a lot, but if I click on an aircraft, it gives me the code. If I look down the bottom here, it tells me when I first and last saw it. So there we are. If we go to our dear friend, the internet, and we go to Gatwick Aviation Society. This is one of many utilities that will help us with registrations and flags. I'm just going to show you this one because it's a nice easy one to do for the purpose of the video. I will show you how to do more in-depth stuff. And I'll try that again. Here's one I called earlier. There we are. It asks your name and your email. Give them that and it will take you to a link. And that link will offer you 32-bit or 64-bit software. If we go to Start, Computer, System Properties, we can see here we're on a 64-bit operating system. Simple as that, that's how we know. So I've downloaded the 64-bit one back to my Downloads folder. And there we have Active Display Light. It was zipped up, but as before, I've extracted all the files. Click the button and away it goes, install. So we have SBS1 data and graphics utility. So once you've done that, base station configuration. Install flags, select your country flags of choice. Um, there is a set installed with base station. I always put the latest one on because there are some new countries um, been defined since uh, breakups in and around Europe. So that's installed, that's fine. If we now have logos, I showed you that empty box and I want logos, so we'll click on this one, it should give us logos. Downloading the set, it downloads it and installs it for us. Please wait, it's telling us what it's doing. Now, hopefully, it will extract them. There we are, it unzips them and it's installed them. And so we have those. Um, I could install silhouettes and all sorts, let's just have some outlines. Um, we're in the United Kingdom, what are my choices? I'm going to install, install all the UK airfields so that um, I know what they look like on the map. And they've all been installed. So there we go, that's enough to get me going. So if I now restart base station, let's have a look and see what that little installation has given us. Okay. So we can see here, let me just reduce the size of the screen so it comes within my video area. Okay, so there we have, still no operator flags, no registrations. Just very quickly though, if I come to Heathrow and zoom in, there's Heathrow Airport with a nice layout and we can see what's going on around Heathrow. I'm a few miles from Heathrow and I've only got the aerial prompt on the window ledge so I'm not going to see stuff in and out of Heathrow, I'll only see it flying over. What I'm interested in at the moment though is these operator flags and registrations. So if we come back to active display and we hit start, then we start to see all these green lines coming up. And what that means is this is a new aircraft for me to see and this has been populated. So if I now reduce that, I've got registration and I've got a flag. If I hit F5 to refresh the list, a few more will be in and keep it going. And it will slowly update them. And then we'll get to the point after a few days where most of the stuff that I see coming in and out has got a registration and we just have the odd one or two need updating. So when I now look at this, I see the hex code, the registration, its country, its aircraft, its serial number, and if I edit the details, I can see the country, the operator code flag, and the registered owner. So, all that data is there. So, there we go. In a very short space of time, we have the SBS installed, showing me all the local traffic. And if I just click here and center on home, the way I am, um, there's a thing here 
called locations manager and some people don't like that to be called here at home um, you can edit it I'm going to call it uh, default which means that when it starts up it will start up as my default location um, and that's that's my default so there we are from start to finish didn't take us too long to install base station install active display light and to get the screen displaying aircraft and what's around them and what they are check back soon for more videos on getting the best out of base station